So I'm on lunch break. I'm sitting in the library in my school, trying to do some journaling that I should have done the night before. And my phone starts ringing because I didn't put it on airplane mode this time. My phone starts ringing. I pick it up. It's my buddy. And he says, oh, Johnny, where are you, man? Oh, you know, I'm in the library trying to get some work done. Come to the calf, man. All right, man, give me five minutes. Didn't even take any convincing, man. I just, I said, fuck it, man. I'll try to half-ass this journaling session and then I can go hang out with my buddies in the cafeteria. And I did, man. I completely half-assed it. I rushed through it. They didn't get it done properly. And then when I went to the cafeteria to sit down with my buddies, we were playing a card game, a game called Spoon. It's, it's actually a fun game, not gonna lie, man. And I did have a good time with them, but I wasn't, I wasn't fully present and I was somewhat resentful, man. I didn't stick to my guns. I didn't stick to my guns. I didn't get the work done that I should have got done that I knew I should have done. So then when I came for that social experience, man, I couldn't fully enjoy it. And yeah, I had, like, we had some laughs. I remember we had some laughs and, uh, and I was joking about some stuff and yeah, it was a good time. But it's a thin line, bro. On self-improvement, it's a, it's a thin line between having a social life, which is you know good for your mental health and for social connection and, and good for you versus wasting time with your buddies. It's a thin line. And that's kind of the everlasting problem we have on self-improvement. Because we went from fucking being losers, fucking <laughs> jacking off in our bedroom, to getting our shit together and then making some friends. And, and honestly, bro, at least for me, man, that, that changed a lot for me, making some good friends, some good people, and hanging out with them and spending time with them. That was a huge difference for me, man. And naturally, man, if you were that guy, you didn't have that before. You didn't have that social connection. You didn't have people that you could just hit up and go hang out with if you didn't have that you didn't have somewhere to be on a on saturday and sunday if you were that guy now that you do have that now that you do have your buddies and these people you're gonna want to spend like all your time with them naturally but we still gotta be on our purpose be on our grind you know get our stuff done or else we get left behind in life and i do have an older video about this you know work social life balance but something i want to tell you today is three social events that you can do that you can do with your buddies that are fun that get you that social connection but are also productive and are beneficial on your self-improvement so number one deep conversation i kind of just realized this writing this script my favorite like social thing to do with my buddies or people, my friends for the past six months have been dinners going out for dinner at a restaurant which is it's, it's not weird like it's not like a weird thing but it's just kind of surprising man it's surprising to me because i wouldn't think that of myself like a year ago like i think it'd be like oh you know going for fucking partying it up or something like like the cringe stuff that like my ego wanted you know but now man dinners are like it's my favorite thing to fucking do with people now because part of it might be atmosphere you don't have it's not like you're at school you know you have fucking these gray nines fucking with you in the cafeteria you have like a table full of lesbians who are being loud and you don't gotta deal with all that you got people coming out trying to be respectable you know dress nicely you know there's a social standard you have to hold yourself up to if you're going out to a restaurant you know depending on the place you know if you're going to fucking mickey d's here if you need a fucking reservation for it there's a social standard there if you know if you're going to fucking mickey d's man there's that's where you find the fucking lesbians man mickey d's part of it might be atmosphere you know like people are more respectable there but also because you have to sit down face each other and wait for the food to get done and get get delivered to you you have to talk to one another you have to talk to one another i saw i fucking saw i hated this man i saw it. fucking canada's wonderland uh, like this amusement park and we went for dinner at the restaurant that was right next to it or like right on the other side of the street and we fucking saw these kids these four like kind of latino looking kids man and they were, i swear to god bro each single one was fucking looking down like this on their phone four of them on at the table it just made me sad man I guess it made me kind of happy that like I wasn't that guy, man. But I just, I couldn't believe my eyes. I got, uh, I asked my friend to take a photo of it because I wanted to use it in a YouTube thumbnail. But if your friends are fucking decent people, man, like, you have no choice but to talk to each other and you have, it's different than if you're like at a school cafeteria. You already have your food there, man. You're just eating it and yeah, you're talking to each other, you're fucking around, saying whatever. But there's something about, maybe it's the pairing of the atmosphere and, you know, sitting across from each other, waiting for the food that just sparks deep conversation man it's also partly where you take it you know you could just you know talk bullshit and that's good too but always when i'm going for dinners we always get into some deep conversation like something that i wrote down here was a couple months ago but i lost a bet i lost a bet i was trying to i don't want to fucking talk about it man so i owed my buddy a bison burger so me him and then another buddy we went to this restaurant you know i got the bison burger for him i paid for it got one for myself and my buddy got i think he got wings or something we started you know talking bullshit whatever but 
the conversation got deeper and deeper as it went on and we kind of just you know cut the bullshit with each other and started you know calling each other out not like fucking like we're gonna beat each other's ass but calling each other out like like hey man what's going on with this man what do you what are you been doing with this what do you think about this you know i was asking my one buddy about you know this girl that he was you know in this like weird situation with i was like buddy what are you doing with that what's going on man how are you feeling about this what's your next move what are you thinking calling him out and keeping him on his edge you know keeping him accountable making sure he's got a plan and he's doing shit and he's not just you know floating and not making decisions and then my buddies did the same for me for this other girl and so i swear we don't only talk about chicks man but but on this particular occasion it was very uh female focused i really like that stuff man i really like having a conversation with a guy with people and just being straight up honest, unfiltered, saying what we think, what we think each other should do, what we think each other is like holding back on. And then also like asking like, how are you doing, man? How's it been going with this? Are you doing good with that? Like as, like, che- like doing a homie checkup on each other, man. And that's beneficial for you too, man, because then you got your buddies keeping you accountable on your goals and then you can keep them accountable on theirs. And it doesn't have to be at a dinner. You know, I use that example because it's, it's, a, it's a fucking good time, man. But if you're a brokey doing YouTube and you're not making any money, man, it doesn't have to be a dinner. Last Sunday, I was at church and I was talking to a buddy of mine there, the pastor's uh, son. He's a, he's a year younger than me, but he's a cool guy. We just got into this deep conversation about, you know, overcoming lust and, you know, dealing with like relationships and stuff and like where we're at with that. It was a great conversation, man, because because we kind of come from different paths, man, because I came from grew up atheist was atheist for like 16 years and then you know found christ and stuff and then he he, you know he was the pastor's son he like was raised in that and then eventually like made the decision for himself that this is what he wanted to to follow this is what how he wanted to live so we have like very different like upbringings and then of course you know i found self-improvement you know cold approaching girls you know getting jacked in the gym all that kind of stuff then you know he's been doing stuff too he's like getting into the gym and stuff which is sick but he's completely offered me a different perspective on these things you know like younger me would probably look at the guy and be like oh you know i'm so much better than him because you know i'm i'm going to the gym I'm, i got the muscle you know i got the experience i've been I, getting girls numbers and going on dates and all this stuff like i would think like oh i'm a i'm a better guy than him i'm a high status guy you know but honestly man this guy's fucking levels past me on some shit like we were talking about he, he was talking about his girlfriend and how because we were talking about lust he was talking about his girlfriend and how you know like if they are getting too like closer or they're getting physical if they go too far then he has to like be like hey we gotta stop this we should you know whatever whatever and he stays disciplined with that and then hearing him say that like how he's taking responsibility for that for the relationship you know to be disciplined with that and to stay away from you know sexual immorality and and you know the devil and all that stuff honestly man i look at myself and i'm like yeah man yeah man like yeah cold approaching girls yeah yeah phone numbers uh you know fucking but i don't have that man I don't have that, you know, I don't have that discipline. I don't have that, that integrity that he has in those areas. So I have a lot to learn from the guy, man. It's like, it's a great like partnership that way, because I can like, I'm coming in with like my self-improvement background. I'm talking about, you know, my, my confidence and all these, all these things that I'm helping him out with. And then he's coming with me for like, like it was religious stuff and integrity being a, a biblical man and all these things. But just like that, man, having like deep conversation with like a guy like that or different people even if you're not going for dinner even if you're just going to church if you're at the gym if you're at school whatever you can get into deep conversations with people and even if you look at them you're like oh they're jeffrey or they're whatever there's still something you can learn from them man there's still some great people out there that you can learn from all right number two challenge this is something that was talked about in the book the way of the superior man in the chapter uh restore your purpose with other men david dita the author he talks about two ways to reclaim that sense of purpose reclaim your your edge and he says one is austerity which is like basically dopamine detoxing getting rid of the bullshit and just stripping your life into just the the bare necessity to be alone with your suffering so you can get awakened by it and then second is challenge challenge awakens competition and competition is how men succeed and if i say something like that you know all the feminists are fucking you know spazzing out having no damn seizure about that even though it sounds kind of cringe man we know just how true that is if we think about when we're in the gym we're benching we're on our last rep right we're trying to fucking pump that shit out and we think of that one guy that guy that we saw in the hallway with that girl that we fucking wanted and he was fucking talking with her and he's got a beard and he's taller than us and we're fucking we're fucking pissed off and get that last rep in that's competition man that's the power of competition and you can have competition with your enemies but having competition with your buddies with your friends that is huge man that's how that's how men connect with each other is through competition and the obvious ways to do this is to go to the gym with a buddy or go uh you know box a buddy or go for a run together stuff like that which is pretty sick too and i've done a few times but if you're like me man and you're lone wolfing it in the gym you know it doesn't have to be exercise related it could also be something as simple as playing pool 
me and my buddies did that like a few times now and it's 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 pretty fucking fun man i'm gonna be honest you know standing around the table talking shit to each other being racist to each other it's a good time and you're being competitive and it reawakens that sense of competition in you okay number three masculine celebrations this is another thing that was talked about in the book the way of the superior man and the fucking examples that david dita the author he used in that chapter was so fucking weird man this is the same chapter i was talking about before but towards the end of it he was talking about how it was good to balance masculine challenges with masculine celebrations but the fucking examples he uses he talked about uh, for like masculine celebrations swimming in cold water getting fucking wasted and then singing chants all night around the fire or some shit it's like, I'm not, like, what the, f like, I don't know, doing cold exposure, though, would be cool. But some realistic examples of this would be you and your buddies going to each other's house, watching the damn Super Bowl that's coming up, you know, having a few drinks, you know, just making the most, you know? Which I think, yeah, you, you should do that once in a while, man. That's good to do once in a while. Of course, you know, there's a, there's a limit to it, and there's an extent where it's just too far. I don't know, man. I have a fucking dissonance between that. Like, I have a dissonance. Like, I have, like, part of me wants to quit drinking and part of me just wants to drink just to have a good time once in a while and trying to find that balance and then i don't know man we were talking about this school dance coming up and then automatically we got into conversation like oh we're pre-gaming this what, what what's the plan and i kind of just went along with it and then like a halfway through the conversation i realized oh shit man i told myself i was gonna like take a break from drinking you know in front of other girls and stuff i made the video like not too long ago about it was called why is going to parties your main goal and i was talking about how like oh i've, I've quit parties for now man I'm, I'm done with that shit i'm done with drinking or, or i didn't say that but i said like i'll only drink with uh just a couple of my boys you know no girls around just a couple of my boys not too many people but now man like i don't know like i don't know what that balance is because i want to have i want to be able to drink if I want to, if I want to have a good time. And like, it's a school dance, you know, it's a good time. That's, it's kind of like the way to go about it. Or am I coping, man? I don't, I, I don't fucking know, bro. Like, yeah, part of me wants to just quit all out and be that guy who's like, nah, I'm not, I'm not doing that. No, I'm not doing that no more. I'm fucking, I'm on my purpose. I'm on my fucking meditation. Or maybe I'm just doing that for ego, just so I could say, oh yeah, man, I don't drink anymore. And then there's also the aspect of, you know, maybe I can drink, but like, what, what is that balance? What is the balance between words? You're doing it too many times a month. Like once a month is that? That's kind of what I'm doing right now. I have on my habit tracker on the bottom, um, like a like a box for a check mark, and then next to it monthly extravaganza, which is for like whenever I have a party or something, or whenever me and my buddies get together to drink or whatever, I can just check off that box, and then I'm done for the month for that. Maybe that's good. Maybe like once a month is good, man. But then for the school dance, man, like, cause you're gonna be there's gonna be chicks there. You might do something you regret. But if you're then again, if you're pre-gaming it, <laughs> this is my fucking brain trying to rationalize this. If you're pre-gaming it and you're not bringing shit in because you got fucking security. So you're going in empty handed. So whatever you had drank before, that's in your system. You're not getting any more. So you're just going on the, the decline from then on. Make sure you have a certain amount. And you don't exceed that beforehand. And then when you go in and then there's going to be girls there and stuff, you don't like you, you know, you're going to be at a certain point where you won't, you know, do shit you, you'll regret or, or whatever. I don't know, man. I don't know, man. If you got some advice for me, bro, like write it in the comments or fucking email me. But yeah, man, whatever you decide for yourself, having those masculine celebrations to balance off, you know, deep conversation and challenges and just the work of daily life. I think that's pretty good too, man. And that can be beneficial up to a point, of course. Final words, man. I really think this, man. I think that relationships are the most important thing in our life. So that's not something we want to forget. We don't want to forget that, man that hey at the end of the day yeah we're on self-improvement we're trying to better ourselves but if we just walked outside today and just got shot in the balls and we're dying on the street the last thing we're gonna be thinking of is our buddies our friends our family you know our parents our sisters our siblings we're not gonna be thinking about all oh, our fucking i didn't fucking hit my workout today i'm fucked man like no we're gonna be fucking calling up our our family our friends and saying our goodbyes so we gotta keep that to ourselves every day so when we want to be social be fully social. Don't think about self-improvement, man. Don't think, like when you've dedicated yourself to a social event, when you said to yourself, okay, I'm gonna go, I'm hanging out with my friends, or I'm doing this thing, I'm going for a dinner, I'm going for this, whatever. Be there, be fully present. Don't be thinking about like that business you're trying to get going. Don't think about that stuff, man. Be fully present or else you're just wasting that time and you might as well have stayed home so you could actually have done that work that's kind of the trap that i've i found myself falling into recently i think about it all week where I'm, I'm doing my work and i'm like oh you know i shouldn't go hang out with these people i miss those people whatever and then when i actually do hang out with them i'm just thinking daydreaming thinking of oh fuck i gotta get this video out i gotta do this shit man no man it's not good but if you're gonna dedicate time with other people 
fully give that time to those people or else you're taking away your gift from them and taking away what that time could be used for for yourself. Don't be afraid to give up the good for the great. And if you have any questions, you can email me at Johnny Self Improvement. That's Johnny with no H because H's are lesbian. Peace out.